that's uh, that's none other than the Senator for Siaya, the Honorable Oburu Ogenga. Happy birthday, Senator Oburu. Order, Honorable Senators. Thank you. Order, honorable senators, order. Order, honorable senators. Senator Oburu Odinga, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, uh, first, Mr. Speaker, I thank you profusely for recognizing me as the youngest member of this house. Mr. Speaker, I have turned 81, and I still feel as if I am I'm 40, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, sir, I also want to take this opportunity to contribute to the uh, report of our committee of the budget, chaired by our very competent leader, uh, uh, from Mandera, uh, Senator Roba. Mr. Speaker, this is a very, very important uh, bill. I think it is one of the, 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 the cardinal functions of our Senate. Our Senate is there to protect the devolution. Mr. Speaker, I was a member of uh, this parliament when there was no CDF. And at that time, it was only the local government fund. And then there was uh, later on something called RDF, Rural Development Fund, which was a very small amount of money, Mr. Speaker, and mainly from donors. And we used to sit long hours as MPs in the DDCs trying to determine where that money would go. Mr. Speaker, when CDF came, we are the ones who brought CDF. Engineer Karwe brought the proposals and we all supported and we created CDF. Mr. Speaker, it appears to me that the creation of CDF has made the MPs, our, 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 our members of the National Assembly, to think that devolution does not matter. Whatever goes to the devolved units does not matter as long as they are getting access to that money. Mr. Speaker, they are getting to, to access to that money illegally. So, so the courts have determined that CDF is illegal several times, Mr. Speaker. But always there is a, a arm twisting, there is a way that the members of the National Assembly always find their ways to bring it back. However, uh, cunningly they try to bring it back. Still when it goes to court, courts declare it illegal. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, there is also another thing. This rural roads uh, 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 fund, which also somehow, I don't know how the members of the National Assembly managed to twist it so that it becomes, uh, it, it, it is under them, it is somehow under them. They are the ones who control the, you know, that fund. So, Mr. Speaker, that is why I think, that is in my own thinking, I think that is why they forget when it comes now to the allocation to the counties, they recklessly reduce it as if they don't live in the counties. There is none of the members of the National Assembly who does not dwell in a particular county, and they know what the counties are supposed to do. They, we do the oversight, apart from protection. But Mr. Speaker, while we do the oversight, we cannot say, uh, oversight what is not there. We can only oversight monies which are there. So the first thing to do is to allocate money. Mr. Speaker, you remember when the, the, the Revenue Allocation Commission recommended 
that uh, the counties should get uh, 412 billion, and we approved that. Then when it went to the National Assembly, they reduced it to 498, and they were saying they have increased it, Mr. Speaker. They did not increase anything because from four, 396 to, four, to 398, that two billion shillings increment, Mr. Speaker, covers only six, more, a little more or a little less than the inflation, which is more than uh, eight, nine percent, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the deduction which are made as part of what they call austerity measures. These deductions, Mr. Speaker, uh, are done arbitrarily without thinking of how they will affect the people at home. Mr. Speaker, when you, th you think of these community health uh, promoters, the community health promoters, uh, originally they were not being paid anything. The counties, it, they were at the mercy of the governors. It was the governors giving them some little allowance, if they will, but they performed the most important function at the grassroots, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, these are the people who treat you where, before you go to any dispensary, if you, are, if you have any disease at home. So these people have been working, working tirelessly with the communities at the grassroots without being remunerated at all, anything. They are not being paid even a token. Mr. Speaker, this is uh, God, God sent, and the MPs should appreciate the work these people do. And for the first time, officially, it is, they, they, there is an allocation for them in the budget to pay them. And the members of the National Assembly don't see such importance. When they want to reduce monies for austerity measures, they should know where to do it. Mainly it should be in the national government budget, not in the county budgets, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this knife, I used to work in the treasury, Mr. Speaker, and we used to, 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 to have a knife which was cutting uh, allocations to ministries. But Mr. Speaker, there was a misunderstanding. There was a misunderstanding because there were ministries were just throwing figures, big figures uh, outside the ceilings which they were given because they knew that the treasury was going to reduce them anyway. So they say, let us give a big figure so that uh, they will, if they reduce it, it will come to what we want. But when it comes to us in treasury, we, if you do work within your ceilings, we give you everything that you want because it is within your ceilings. But if you inflate it, we don't know where to cut. So we just cut maybe some of the most essential ones you need. This is what the members of the National Assembly are doing. They are cutting the most essential. They are, atta uh, they, 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 they are attacking roads. They are attacking industrial parks. They are attacking health, the community health workers. Mr. Speaker, these are areas which should be no-go zone for the National Assembly when they come to reduction. These are areas which should be protected and they should not touch on this. Mr. Speaker, the, some of them don't understand what industrial parks mean. These industrial parks are going to create a revolution in terms of employment of the youth in the rural areas. And Mr. Speaker, when they are established there, it should be the duty of every leader to protect them and make sure that that money is ring-fenced and it is not uh, uh, touched in uh, austerity measures when you, are, you come to reducing uh, allocations, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I don't want to speak more because mine, mine was only to support the recommendations of uh, this committee, and I think they have done a good job, and we shall continue to support you if you work this. I used to be the chairman of finance committee before budget committee was created. We are the ones who created the budget committee, and I really appreciate the work being done by you, Honorable Roba, and your committee. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity. Uh, I'm aware uh, you've whispered it to me, so you need not uh, take to the floor. Now, Honorable Senators, we had deferred two orders um, because we did not have the requisite uh, delegations 
to go into division. Now we do. So allow me to rearrange today's order paper pursuant to standing order 45-2. We handle order number 9 and 10, and thereafter we come back to the debate on, uh, on the additional revenue. It will take us less than 10 minutes. Clerk, proceed to call those to orders, please. Order number 9. The political parties amendment number two bill, Senate bills number 26 of 2024, second reading division.